Okay. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rachel Kilberg Varley. I'm the public art coordinator for the city of Iowa City. Um, so today, like I said, we're just going to talk through our public art matching grant program, uh, which our 2024 session is open and uh, available for applications currently. Uh, so just quick agenda for the day. Um, we're going to just kind of talk through what the program is, who's eligible, how do you apply, um, what will that review process look like. I'll give you um, some kind of tips for success or what uh, the Public Art Advisory Committee would like to see in these applications. And then, as I mentioned, we'll have time for uh, some question and answer at the end. And please, anyone, uh, as I'm going along, if, if you have quite, think of questions that you don't want to wait, you can put it in the chat and, and we'll get to it at the end. Or if something happens, you suddenly can't hear me or can't see my slides well, just let me know. Okay, so the Public Art Matching Grant Program, really the purpose of the program is just to um, foster creativity in our community and to most importantly, enhance access and opportunity to the arts in Iowa City. So this is just a high level overview of the program and we're gonna dive into all this a little bit deeper as we go through the, the presentation, um, but it is a 50-50 matching grant program. As I mentioned, those applications are available now um, at icgov.org slash public art. Um, for the most part, it funds visual, audio, or performance-based projects or hybrids of those. Um, it really targets, as I mentioned, with the goal being to enhance access and opportunity for arts in Iowa City. Uh, it really targets projects which are publicly accessible and viewable within Iowa City, so free to access and the public can easily get to it. Um, really, anyone can apply, organization, school, businesses, even individual artists. Um, and it's also important that the, the grant money is really necessary to move the project forward. Um, so these are just some examples of past projects. Um, don't get too hung up on these. Uh, again, I just wanted to show you kind of the wide array of projects that are eligible and could be eligible and that we have funded in the past. So um, here you see, you know, there's workshops, there's live performances, murals, outdoor uh, readings, so all different kinds of things. And uh, as we go along in the presentation, I'll talk about some of the elements which made these projects really compelling for the Public Art Advisory Committee uh, to uh, award a grant to the project. So the funding, um, as I mentioned, it's a 50-50 matching grant program. So the maximum award that you can get through the grant is $4,000. So if it were to be a straight 50-50 match, that means that your total project cost would have to be at least $8,000. So it can be more than that. The project can cost really as much as you want, but um, the city's grant award can't exceed 50% of the total project costs and it can't exceed more than $4,000. So um, if, if your project costs $12,000, you can still apply, but in that case, we wouldn't um, consider awarding 6,000, which would be half. We would only award up to 4,000. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then the minimum grant award, just to make sure that we're putting these dollars towards um, something that, that really needs it and, and is a catalyst um, is $500. So a minimum project cost would have to be at least $1,000 if you're asking for that 50% uh, match from the city at 500. So anywhere between five and four thousand, $500 and $4,000 is what you'll see the city awards at. Um, you can leverage as many fund other funding sources as you'd like. Um, in fact, proposals which do leverage uh, a higher percentage perhaps of non-city sources or just demonstrate that there is um, diverse community support through diverse financial commitments, um, they may score better, but um, not necessarily, but we do wanna see some level of buy-in, not just from city funding, but from whether it's your organization or another funding source that you've worked to cultivate. Um, so some acceptable matching fund sources would be other grant funds that aren't from the city, so non-city grant funds, perhaps donations, private donations, um, any kind of contribution from your own organization's budget or other persons and partners involved in the project. And then we also do accept in-kind services, commodities, or supplies as uh, a match, as a uh, eligible match as well. So 
So what can those grant awards be spent on? Um, the kind of the big three that we see most often and, and that we explicitly allow are materials and supplies for the project, wages or stipends for artists or performers who are creating the work um, or performing the, the project, and then contract labor that might be needed for installation or site prep uh, for the project to go forward. Um, what we, we will not allow the funds to be spent on would be any sort of private expenses. So any expenses that um, would directly benefit an individual or an individual business or an organization. It has to be related to the execution of the art project. General administration fees, other than uh, kind of that contract labor piece that I mentioned, um, permitting fees would not be an eligible expense. You can't use matching grant funds to buy land or lease land or purchase any sort of property um, to, to hold or, or put the public art project on. And then food and beverage would also not be an eligible expense um, with these funds. So that brings us to who can apply, which as I mentioned, um, really wide open, almost anyone can apply, organizations, schools, individuals, nonprofits, arts and culture organizations, arts and culture nonprofits, privately owned businesses, neighborhood associations, individual artists. Um, that we don't have as many restrictions on who can submit the application. Um, we do have a, a policy about whether you've been um, uh, granted public art matching grant funds in the past, then um, we may still consider your project, but we may give preference to others who have not received funding in the past. So I'll just review that policy quickly in case any of you on the call have received funding in the past. Um, if you have, you can still apply as long as whatever project we provided funding for in the past has been completed and completed satisfactorily. Um, the Public Art Advisory Committee is the one who reviews the applications and they can give that preference, as I mentioned, to any applicants who haven't previously received funds. Um, but again, if you have and you want to apply and you've shown success um, and responsibly using our funds in the past, please do so. And I would just encourage you to consider a couple of these points. So one, make sure it's clear how does the matching grant fund fill a gap that another funding source couldn't. Um, if it's maybe for a project, for the exact same project or really similar project that you've received funding for in the past, please tell us how this new proposal builds upon that or um, is really different in any way. Um, and then tell us more about how the funding will provide any new or expanded opportunities for artists or community access to public art. So if you've previously previously applied and been awarded public art matching grant funding, let me know and then I'll be happy to share the full policy with you and um, would be happy to talk through uh, so you can consider whether you'd like to apply or not. Okay, so as we think about what types of projects are eligible, um, I almost would encourage you to think, um, you know, more about what is not eligible because we do encourage creativity. We love to see innovative, fresh, new ideas, but keep in mind what those guidelines are and what those parameters are so that you aren't applying for something that we would consider ineligible. So these are elements that would disqualify your proposal from being uh, considered. So anything that's regular programming, if it's um, something you regularly provide uh, as an organization or a group or a nonprofit or whatever that may be, um, then this grant program is really looking for kind of those one-time or new projects um, that are, again, intended to promote access and opportunity within the arts. Um, fundraising is not allowed. Any project that advocates for public policy or evangelizes a belief, anything that does not have art as the primary focus, that's really our goal through this program. So that's what we want to maintain the, the main focus as. And then the project cannot promote or benefit a for-profit business or individual anyway. So as I mentioned, a, a private business may well um, apply for the grant, but the project itself should not um, be anything that, say, 
drives drives business to the business or um, otherwise kind of like financially or in any other way benefits them. Um, again, it should it should be focused on just providing that access and opportunity to the public uh, for the arts. Um, and then finally, uh, there cannot be any cost to participate uh, in the program, at least for the portion funded by the grant. So let's say you have a festival that you hold um, and you it's a ticketed event. Well, if you wanted to apply for a grant um, to incorporate a portion that would be free or non-ticketed, then that could be considered. But it couldn't be um, for a project that would still have a paywall in order to access it, if that makes sense. If there's questions about that or it wasn't clear, please let me know and I'll circle back and, and try to ex give another example. So then that takes us to what types of projects are eligible. And as I mentioned, just be creative. Uh, in general, we've funded visual, audio, performance-based projects, um, projects that have a participatory element or allow the community to get their hands uh, on it and involved in some way. Um, but most importantly, as I mentioned, the projects have to be free and accessible. So I'm going to move in now to just talk about what makes a project really compelling and what makes it a strong proposal. Um, so these are a few elements that the Public Art Advisory Committee has identified as um, uh, being some of their top priorities. So functional art, that would be any sort of art that has a purpose or a function. So a bench is a great example of this. Um, unexpected art, that would be any projects that happen in a time or a place where art is not expected to be. Um, and then participatory art, as I mentioned, that would be any projects that have an obvious opportunity or other aspect for the community and the public to participate in the project, whether that's weighing in on it and providing feedback about it or whether it's actually you know getting their hands dirty and doing the painting or doing the writing or whatever the the project may be and then ephemeral art which i have a trouble saying um but that's really just projects that can only be experienced in a certain time or place and then would be over which all public art is in some way, but uh, again, this is kind of also tied back to that unexpected art where it's something that, you know, drives some intrigue towards the project. Okay, so eligibility, what makes a project eligible? So you, now, you, now you understand, you know, what types of projects we're looking for. Um, these are also um, important uh, aspects that you'll want to incorporate into your proposal. So it must be located within Iowa City limits. Um, the artist doesn't have to be from Iowa City or anything like that, but the project itself should be located within city limits. Um, it also needs to be free and accessible to the public. So uh, as I mentioned and gave a couple examples now, um, there can be a, a paid portion, but not that this grant is um, being used towards. So projects can be located on public or private property. Um, but they just, the public has to be able to get to it. So if it's on private property, then it has to be, you know, clearly, clearly the public knows about it. They can get to it easily. There's no gate or anything like that. Um, and then, uh, you must have permission from the property owner. So whether it's on private property or on public property, you need to have permission either from the property owner or from the city. And you should get that permission before you submit the proposal. So we don't want to get in a situation where you think, yeah, this would be a great location. You put it in your proposal without checking with anyone. We go ahead, award the project, and then come back to you only to find out that, eh, well, that location isn't going to work because the property owner, um, you know, has a problem with it. So we want to avoid that and make sure you're doing your due diligence before you submit that application. Um, also, you want to make sure that when you submit your application, you're really clear about what the kind of long-term maintenance and or removal plan is. So if you want to propose a project that involves installing a sculpture, for example, um, well, we want to see through your application that you've done your due diligence to um, identify what type of maintenance is going to need to be done, who is going to do that, um, and how long is it going to be in place? Who's installing it? Who's removing it? Uh, again, we don't want to get in a situation where someone thinks, yeah, we want to do 
this project at a park, but then assume that the city parks and rec staff will take care of it. So you want to have all those questions answered in advance, and you want to make sure that when the public art advisory committee is reading through their application, um, they have a really strong understanding that, uh, again, you've you've done your homework and you have a plan in place and um, the project will not only take place, but it will continue to be maintained in good condition and that there's a, a plan for removal. And then, as I mentioned before, I'll just also add on the slide, any projects, of course, that would result in personal profit or gain for the applicant or the organization who's applying would not be considered. So this is kind of a rough timeline of, of what this public art matching grant process looks like. So uh, the application period is open now, which hopefully, hopefully many of you already know, which is why you're on this call. Um, so those applications are due by midnight on March 15th. Um, and then in March and April, the Public Art Advisory Committee will really be taking a look at those proposals, reviewing them. They use a scoring matrix to do so. Um, and then hopefully by that April Public Art Advisory Committee meeting, they will have the opportunity to make final decisions and um, select who they'd like to award grants to. Um, by May of 2024, I will be the one to go ahead and notify applicants and to work with you on getting a funding agreement signed. And then all projects will need to be completed by the end of 2024. So by December 31st of 2024, that means that the project is totally completed. Any reporting requirements um, are completed. And then you have also submitted your documentation for payment reimbursement. So that's going to take me into um, kind of scoring criteria and what that scoring process uh, looks like and what type of criteria the Public Art Advisory Committee is looking at when they're scoring your projects. So this, these next few slides that I'm going to go over, the examples that I'm giving would be the scoring criteria for the best projects, for the exemplary proposals. Um, so again, this is not to say that you're expected to score perfectly in every category. We wouldn't expect that. but this will give you an idea of within each criteria, you know, what the Public Art Advisory Committee will be kind of evaluating when they're considering your proposal. Um, so the first section here would be project details and descriptions. So first for your application, just make sure you've filled out all the sections, make sure it's clear, it's not too lengthy, but not um, too short that, you know, there's a lot of question marks or some important details are missing. Um, just review it, make sure it's professionally done, no typos, you all know, um, you all know what to do. Um, they'll be looking at whether the project is new or different. So again, not just have you applied before, but um, is it something that uh, is new or different to the community, an offering that hasn't been there before, um, or a gap that has existed. And then just be really clear about that justification for the project. Why do you think this is a good idea? Um, what type of support do you have for the project? Are there other partners? Are there, is your target audience really asking for or in need of a this type of project? You can also include letters of support. We have that um, on our application and uh, you're welcome to include those. They're not required. So artwork event and materials description. So this would be, again, just describing that project really clearly, showing how perhaps it ties back to that mission, vision, uh, and goals in the public art strategic plan, which you can find on our public art website. And I'll show you uh, before our presentations over here today. Any images, plans, and project illustrations that you submit. Um, so that would be kind of either the concept design or work samples from the artist or performer in the past. Um, those should just be high quality um, and they should also tell us something. So they should either demonstrate that the artist or performer is capable of pulling off this type of project. Um, and we should get a sense of what we can expect if we were to fund the project and it were to go through. Um, again, our, the, our kind of definition of public art is on our public art, um, strategic plan and website and kind of just briefly review that. I'm not expecting you to read the whole street, the whole public art strategic plan, but just have a general idea of what types of things, uh, we're looking for in that, um, and, and that the project, you know, continue to, continues to advance our mission of making public art more accessible and, um, and more opportunities for it. 
The project location should be thoughtful, um, ideally strategic. There's a reason why you decided upon the location you want to hold the project. And it should also be appropriate for reaching whatever target audience you've identified, uh, whether that's just the general public or a specific demographic. Um, and then technical ability to carry out the project. So this really just goes into the details of what's in your project and whether we can tell, again, that you've done your homework and know what, what it takes to pull off the project and are prepared to do so. So we'd like to see the action plan, strong implementation objectives, a clear timeline that um, doesn't only make sense, but it's detailed and, and thoughtful. And then again, any artists or partners that you reference in your proposal, um, we'd love to see, you know, what type of experience they have or otherwise why they're uh, equipped to help carry out the project. Kind of the next section of that rubric the, the PAC would look at would be uh, project costs and budget. So matching fund expenses and impact of PAC funds would be the first cr uh, criteria. And when I say PAC, that's short for Public Art Advisory Committee. So the budget would need to be very clear. It should be comprehensive and it should be detailed. Um, we don't wanna see really vague budget line items. We wanna have a good sense of how will you be spending not only our public um, art funding, but also uh, any other funding sources that you've incorporated into the project. The matching funds that you're proposing should be clearly identified. And really the application tries has, has gone through some updates this year to try to make that more intuitive to do so. Um, and then we want kind of a clear understanding of what our matching funds will be used for. Why are they necessary and um, what specifically will they be used for? Uh, obviously, a realistic and thoughtful budget is, is key as well. And then along with kind of our funding and what you're asking for there, we also want to know more about the funds that you plan to use from other sources. So. Um, just tell us about what those funding sources are. Um, if there's any in-kind support, please describe what that is and how it'll be provided. Um, and then again, just why the public art funds are necessary in order to, to make the project go forward. Um, that takes us to the third section, which is project outcomes. So Ideally, you would incorporate some strong qualitative and quantitative measures to help um, you identify or analyze the success of the project after it's taken place. Um, and hopefully you would also have, you know, the ability to actually, actually capture that data that you propose. So um, to be able to set those performance metrics and say, we think this is what would tell us that our project was successful and then, um, you know, be able to actually collect the data to do so. Um, engagement with a broader audience, uh, so you, your target community for the project should be well-defined, and it doesn't have to be a small subset. It can be the general public, just, you know, Iowa City residents, um, but if it's not, we want to know, um, well, either way, if it is, we want to know why and, and why you think your project is needed in the community, and if you're targeting a more focused group, we also want to know why and, and what that need is. Um, but it should always be relevant. So whoever your project is targeting um, should make sense for what type of project you're proposing. Um, and then we also love to see how projects um, can provide more equitable access to the arts and specifically to your project and what steps you'll take to, to make your project more uh, inclusive and equitable. And then if you have any community partners in your project, um, we do love to see partnerships. We'd love to see collaboration. Um, if you can clearly demonstrate that, that will strengthen your project. Um, and it should be clear if you do, you know, we don't want to see you just kind of slap a partner's name on there just in the hopes that it will make your project score better. We want to see any projects who are mentioned, it should be really clear what their role is in the project and that they do have some stake in it. So that's kind of the, the scoring rubric. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and talk a little bit about the application. I'll exit out of this and just open the webpage to show you where you can find uh, that application online. So let me swap my screen share here a second. Bear with me. Okay. So can everyone just a thumbs up from someone that uh, you can see the Okay, great. So 
our public art uh, web page is icgov.org slash public art. You can also find it by going to residence and then public art program. Uh, and then when you're on this page, um, you kind of scroll down and you'll see the public 2024 public art matching grant section. So this is where I'll post the recording and slides from uh, our call right now. And then um, you can find some frequently asked questions here. So this is a document that covers all the same things that I'm talking about today, but just hopefully an easy reference for you to go back to. And then that's where you can find our grant application. So I'm gonna talk through some of the, um, I would say more complex or detailed sections of the application, but I just wanted to click through it a little bit here so you get a sense of, of what that application looks like if you haven't already. So um, first thing is just kind of this, this gateway that just reminds you again, you need to be getting um, appropriate permissions before you're going ahead and submitting a project for, for someone's property. Um, you need to be talking to any partners or, you know, city stakeholders. So if you, again, want to have a project on the public right of way or something, you need to be talking to engineering in advance and you should be having all those conversations before you even open this application. Um, so the first page, pretty kind of all the collecting all the basic information about who you are and, and what your project is. Um, page two really dives into more detail about what that project is, who your intended audience is. This should all be pretty intuitive if you've filled out grant applications before or any kind of similar form. Um, and then the project timeline is something I'll go over in our presentation just to give you an idea of what we're really looking for here, but it allows you to add different milestones and kind of identify at least a ballpark date of when, when you would expect to have it happen. Funding sources, same thing. I'll, I'll talk more about this, but um, we've made, if you've applied for public art matching grants in the past, this probably looks a lot different to what you're used to, but we've made some changes to the application to make it uh, more intuitive and um, easier for you to provide the level of detail that we're looking for. And then your file uploads. So um, you should have no problem, you know, uploading any letters of support, images, site plans, anything like that, that, that strengthens your project. But if you do just reach out to me and, and we'll figure it out. Um, and then on this last page, the file uploads page is where you can save as a draft. So if you get into the application, you start working on it and then, you know, something comes up and you need to step away or you need to get more information before you can continue. You can always use this drop down at the top to go to that last page and click save as draft. That way, when you come back, what you've already worked on will still be there. You won't see that save as draft option on any other page except the last page. So just keep that in mind. And um, and if you plan to, you know, get in work, come back later and finish more work, then use that save as draft option. I always recommend, you know, if you can, just put it in a separate document that that you know will save securely a Google Doc or Word document or whatever that is. Um, that way, you always do have that backup, and you can just kind of copy and paste once you're ready to actually submit the application. <clears throat> so that's where the um, application is online. I'm going to go back to the presentation. Okay. Um, and like I said, there's just a couple sections that I want to talk through a little bit more. So First was that project timeline example. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a clear and actionable timeline. So if we were to check in on your project, we should be able to look at the timeline you submitted, and then um, you know you should be at least somewhere close to what you submitted. So we would know kind of approximately at what phase of the project you'd be in. And this is just an example to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking for. So maybe. If you have public engagement, you begin that phase. And then maybe you're working with the artists who are finalizing a design by this date. And then you want to make sure you have all your supplies purchased by this date. You Maybe you want to do advertising, which you're going to start at this date. Whatever those milestones are for your project, they're going to be different for every project. Um, some will have much more than others. Some will be pretty simple and straightforward. So, um, you know, don't take this for what it's worth, but just use it as a guide. So what we're really looking for is just, you know, for us to understand 
what will your execution of the project look like? And also it hopefully will help you, you know, be thoughtful about your project and think through really all those steps that are needed in order to make it successful. Don't get too hung up again on, you know, whether the dates are perfectly exact. It should be just approximately close to what you anticipate um, and give us a good idea. Okay, so that other section um, would be kind of the clear funding source example. So as we talked about earlier in the presentation, city grant requests can't be more than 50% of the total project cost. So um, that's what just that first section is asking. What is the total project cost and what is the matching grant request? And if we see that, you know, the matching grant request is either below our minimum, above our $4,000 maximum, or it's more than the 50% of your total project costs, well, that's going to really quickly disqualify your application. So just some basics there. And then as you're thinking through any other funding sources that are helping to make your project happen, um, just describe clearly what those are. Um, and then uh, help us understand, you know, about how much is coming from each funding source and whether you know that it's coming in or you plan to ask for it. Um, so just be, again, this is gonna look different for everyone, but just be descriptive enough that if we look at it, we can clearly understand where the funds are coming from and how reliable um, your, your application is and your estimation of, of funding sources is. Same thing with the in-kind, you know, if you have any sort of in-kind donations, just explain what those are, why they're coming from, and how they'll be used in the project. Um, so the project budget, there's actually an example built right into the application. So hopefully that's helpful to you as you fill that application out. Um, and again, same kind of thing here. Any expense items that you list should be um, clear and we should be able to clearly tie them back to the project description. So if you're doing, you know, a mural, for example, and then we see an expense item that says, um, oh, I don't know, like concrete pouring, you know, we're going to have some questions. So just make sure again, whatever you're describing your project as your budget should line up to it. Um, and your total expenses listed should also mirror and reflect what's in your funding sources. So if you show like total expenses of $3,000, but then what you showed on your funding sources was only $1,500, again, we're gonna have questions and we're gonna uh, question the integrity of the application. Um, any other expenses uh, listed, again, should not financially benefit the organization in any way that's not directly related to executing the, process, the project. Um, and as I've said a million times already on the call, just again, you have to make sure that whatever your project is, is that it's free and accessible to the public. Okay, so that's kind of the filling out the application portion. So this is um, just some kind of tips for success if you really want to submit a strong application and go above and beyond. Um, as I mentioned, including that maintenance plan and removal plan is really important. Um, the Public Art Advisory Committee members have commented on this uh, in recent years, so they're gonna be looking for it. And if you don't include it, again, it, it might not help your application score competitively because they wanna know that you've been very thoughtful about the project, that you understand what level of work kind of goes into these things and that you aren't just uh, hoping to create something and then hope someone else will take care of it, that you that you have some skin in the game too. So um, I really suggest including that in your project description. Um, as a city, one of our values and city council strategic plan values is um, the promotion of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So please think about ways that you can um, advance those principles through your project um, at any phase or multiple phases throughout the project. And then um, explore, you know, potential partnerships. Is there someone who's already doing what you want to do? Is your project going to duplicate efforts? Is it going to expand upon what someone else is doing in a new or interesting way? Or are there important partnerships that would help make your project be more successful? And then just make sure, again, that your application that you do submit is complete. All the sections are filled out the way we're asking them to be filled out. They're clear. Um, if you know, you don't want a really good project to not be funded just because, you know, you left out a detail that 
was important and the public advisory committee kind of had a, a question about and they just decided to fund something else. So just do your best to, to include as much as you can in that application. And then uh, as far as funding awards go, so as I mentioned, the, the public art advisory committee will use um, a scoring rubric to first score all the proposals that will come in. So they kind of do that on their own. All of those scores are compiled anonymously. And then at a public meeting, they kind of look at the top, um, the top scores, talk through whether, you know, they think there's a project that should have been included in the top scores that wasn't or the projects that scored highly, you know, do they all feel good about those? Are there any unanswered questions? Anything like that. So they just kind of talk through what that scoring generated and then um, ideally come to uh, a few determinations of what types of funding awards they'd, they'd like to make. So your project can be funded in full. So if you request $2,000, you may get $2,000, but you may get, you know, $1,500 or $1,000. So they can also make the decision to fund at um, a lower amount than what you requested. And in that case, you know, as I re relayed the funding award back to you, we'd have to make the decision whether, yeah, you can cover the gap with another uh, funding source or um, no, sorry, we can't, we can't move forward if that's not the case. Um, and then not all project submissions will be funded. So we simply don't have enough um, funding, unfortunately, to probably meet all the need that there is. Um, but uh, the PAC will do their best to, to make responsible decisions uh, based on the proposals they receive. Um, and then if you are awarded, you'll I'll work with you to um, sign a funding agreement. So that would detail, you know, our agreed upon completion date. Again, it has to be done before the end of 2024, what the scope of work includes. So we're both clear on, you know, what the actual project that plays out will look like. Any funding restrictions. So um, if, if there's any expenses, like I mentioned earlier, that the funding can't be used for, and then any reporting requirements. So usually we like to have, you know, it's nothing too onerous. It's just some sort of report after the project's been done. So we can kind of see was it successful or not. And sometimes it's not, or not as much as we hoped it would be. And that's okay. But um, really, again, the goal of these funds is to to try new things and and um, and get get give pro give new and fresh I ideas some legs to to try it. So that's kind of what the funding award um, phase would look like. Um, so as I mentioned, the application is available online now. They're due by midnight on March 15th. Um, and the FAQ documents on our webpage, these slides will be on our webpage. So I finished with enough time to take some questions. So I'll leave this slide up for a little bit here that has um, my contact information. If there's anything I didn't cover on today's um, presentation, please reach out to me. You can call, you can email, whatever, and um, I'll make sure to get your answers. Same thing, if you have trouble filling out the application, let me know um, and, and we'll figure out a solution. I will just say, if you're going to be submitting application, try not to do it at 11 p.m. the night it's due, because um, then I'm probably less likely to be able to help you on time, and, and we don't want that to happen. So um, try to get things in as early as you can. I know we're all busy. Okay, I'll take questions. I have a couple chats. Uh, let's see. So one question was, what if our event would take place at the beginning of May? Um, so the important thing is that any funded projects, we can't be funding something that happened after the fact, right? Part of the reason is we want to make sure that these funding, that the funding um, is being used, you know, that it's necessary in order to make the project go forward. So if you are able to pay for and hold your project, then, it, you know, it's kind of like, well, are we backfilling something that would have happened anyway? Um, funding awards should be made at the April 4th meeting. So ideally, if if funding awards are made and we can get your agreement signed and back, then a uh, early May project should be not a problem. Okay, another question. Can a person work on more than one funded project, say one for an agency and one for themselves? Um, yeah, there's no restrictions on that. You know, if you are part of a nonprofit that's submitting an application, that's fine. If you're also an artist submitting an application, um, 
assuming that they're you know two different projects that the that the pack could consider um you know just consider both of them separately what you wouldn't want to do would be to submit two applications for the same project and as i'm answering these questions if i don't quite hit the nail on the head of what you were hoping to find out just let me know you can pop on and ask um using your voice or you can put it in the chat okay um can more than one different request be made by the same source so i think this question is asking for example can one organization submit two applications um Again, there's no restriction on doing that, but what I would say the Public Art Advisory Committee is probably going to want to know is, you know, first of all, they're probably going to want to see that the the projects are intentional and um, meaningful, and it's not just, you know, for lack of a better term, like a money grab. They want to see that whatever you're submitting is something that really is aligned with both the public art matching grant program goals and with your own organization's goals. Um, so as long as you feel like those conditions are met and it's two clearly distinct projects um, that warrant separate applications, then um, yes, you can submit two applications. I would also say probably not to anticipate that um, the Public Art Advisory Committee would fund two applications or two different projects from the same organization. Um, I don't think there's anything you know, in our policy that prevents them from doing that, but I don't think that's necessarily in line with how they like to um, allocate these funds usually. Um, how much in total grants are available and are past grant winners grant requests available to review? Um, we, we don't have like a existing repository of past grant, um, proposals, I could probably provide you an example. So if you want to, if you need, feel like you need an example, you can email me and, and I can get you one. I will say we did make some substantial changes to the application form this year. So I don't know how helpful to be, but, but it may be. Um, and then think back to that advice I gave earlier, which is, you know, don't get too hung up on making it, you know, just like a past project that was funded because every public art advisory committee is going to be looking for different things and we want to see creative, fresh, new projects. So um, if you can start from a place of creativity and innovation, I think that uh, is a better bet than, um, you know, trying to copy something that's been done. Not that you can't use an example from the past. Um, and then the total grant award I don't have in front of me, so I apologize for that. Um, I have another request here to talk about the artist registry, which I'll share is on our website. <laughs> so if you go again on our public art uh, advisory, oh, let me see where this is, sorry. So under the residence page on icgov.org, under our public art program, there you see the Iowa City Artist Registry. So if you click on that, that's any kind of local artists who have, um, you know, submitted their information to be on this registry and it it's a wide range. So it's visual artists, it's performing, literary, it's um, maybe arts and culture, nonprofit organizations. Um, and you kind of can just expand it and then it allows you to uh, find more, out more information about that particular artist. This is really, this is kind of probably a really helpful resource for you if you have a project and you know what you want done, but you don't know an artist uh, who can pull it off. So you could go ahead and browse this registry to find someone who um, kind of matches the aesthetic that you're looking for and the type of project that you're hoping to pull off um, and then reach out to them directly. We we don't find artists for you. We provide this resource. Um, and if, if you don't find what you're looking for here, again, you can contact me and I can try to help make some suggestions or point you in a direction of where you might um, find someone who could help you with your project. Okay. So this question says, a one, is a one-time performance acceptable and located at private property, which is open to the public? Yes, we've definitely funded projects in the past, which were just like a one-time performance. So like I said, these 
these um, grants, it, it can be structured a number of ways. Sometimes people have done, you know, a few, a series of workshops using their funding. Sometimes people have done just one event, whether it's like one fashion show or one musical performance or whatever that is. Um, and then others have, you know, used it to help catalyze something that they now do annually. So um, we don't fund, we don't fund, you know, recurring or regular programming, but we can help fund things that maybe you want to start up and then uh, hopefully continue in the future if you're able to. Um, yes, we can fund projects located on private property, again, as long as it's open to the public. So if you, you know, the extreme example would be if, if you were to get funding for a sculpture in your backyard and you got a fenced in backyard and no one knew about the sculpture, well, I wouldn't say that's very accessible to the public. But if you have, if you own, you know, private land that operates as parkland and the public knows about that and they frequently use it the same way they would maybe a city park, then, you know, that makes more sense. Okay, what happens if a project gets off budget? Any further grant funds up to $4,000. Um, no, the maximum that we will award is $4,000. And um, that again is for projects which have a total project cost of at least $8,000. So a really good um, uh, practice would be to incorporate a contingency into your budget. So, you know, a 10% contingency can be considered normal. Um, and that just gives you a little buffer room in case something goes uh, a little bit off. Can I say more about specific metrics for success? Um, I maybe need a little bit more guidance on what you're looking for, but um, you know we don't have anything specific that we're looking for. So you know the number of people you reach isn't a metric that we require you to submit or anything like that. Because we fund so many different projects and a wide variety of types of projects, your metric of success is going to look different for everyone. So I know that maybe isn't super helpful of a response, but hopefully it helps you think strategically and intentionally about, you know, what does success look like for you and um, then design a metric of success around that. So whether it's reach or whether it's reaching a population who hasn't um, been reached in the past or whether it's meeting a gap in the community, you know, it's like I said, it's going to look different for everything. We don't have a set of metrics that, you know, we're judging on or that we're really looking for. Um, but what's more important is that we want to know that you're thinking about it and that you're not just throwing a project out into the ether and hoping it's successful, that you're actually thinking about uh, intentionally about, you know, what does success look like? Is promotion considered an acceptable expense? Um, I'm going to have to see who asked this question, Jessica. Um, I, I believe so, but I will have to confirm with that. So um, I'll make sure to get that added to the FAQs um, regardless, but I believe that that would be considered acceptable. Is artist compensation to be taxed? Um, again, I'm not sure, like I'm assuming you're not hiring an artist onto your payroll. So if you're um, you know, paying them an artist stipend, they would be, um, reporting their income tax themselves. So I don't think you would have any requirements, but let me know if I'm misunderstanding the question. Okay. You're keeping me very busy with questions. This is great. So I'm glad that we're holding this and everyone's getting a chance to, um, to, to ask any questions you have. We have a few minutes left, so I'll wait and see if I get any more um, in the chat or if you wanna unmute yourself and and share out. Okay, well, I'm, okay, I see one more. If doing this project for an agency, payment could be via payroll, though could also be paid to you. Um, you have to be careful about that, I'll say. If you have an artist on your payroll, that's going to be different than if you're paying someone who's not necessarily an artist to do the project. So like I said, be very thoughtful and careful about, you know, if 
the fund is just, the funding is um, benefiting your organization. If the Public Art Advisory Committee looks at your application and whether this is what's happening or not, if they feel like you're just requesting public art funds to kind of offset some business expenses that you know would otherwise be funded by something else, they're probably not going to look favorably upon that. So be thoughtful about what you're asking for. Again, if it's really needed, what types of things you can spend um, public art funding on. And uh, if you have, you know, more detailed questions or want to talk about it more, um, feel free to reach out to me. So with that, I'll put my contact email in the chat or my contact information in the chat. Um, so it's rkilberg.iowa-city.org or my number is 319-356-5248. Um, you've got about a month left to submit your application. So thank you all for joining us on the call. All of these resources, again, be available available at icgov.org slash public art. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what types of projects you have in mind. So thank you, everyone.